Let's now talk about uh, back to locking. So let's say n cores are waiting for a lock. And the question is, how long does it take to hand off from one core that has a lock to the next core that's waiting for the lock? That bottleneck is usually some sort of interconnect between those cores. So let's just count the messages. That is, let's just count the finds and the invalidates, and it'll give us uh, an estimate of what our overhead is. So our goal is n cores we can get through in O and n time. So we can complete all of them getting through their locks. That's our goal. Which means we really want to the, our, each handoff takes a constant amount of time, where again the time we're really looking at is the number of messages that have to send back and forth. And what we're going to find is standard approaches that we take for locking do not satisfy this. Here's an example, and let's see what happens. This is just our standard test and set spin lock, right? So our standard spin lock that's each core is just going through as quick as it can, calling exchange, calling exchange, calling exchange, calling exchange. Okay. So is there a problem? <laughs> well, the problem is that it's, it's fine if the cores are wasting their own time. The problem is what happens when we want to hand over from one core to another core. So let's look at what happens. So we have the lock holder, right? And the lock holder, let's say, goes ahead and does a release. So they need to set the locked field to zero. Sounds easy, right? How is that going to work? Well, this core is going to need to, in order to write, get into the modify state. Right? The cache is needing to get into the modify state. But think of all these two. All these exchanges have all of the CPUs getting into modify state. Right? One after another, after another, after another. And so when the lock holder goes to release, it's going to be behind or waiting in a bunch of queues, right? We're going to have, uh, let's say this is CPU3, is the lock holder. So we're going to have n CPUs. The lock holder is going to be number three, and it wants to write uh, zero. All the rest of them are doing exchanges, and this one's doing exchange. So they are all fighting to get modified. And in each case, what's going to happen? In order to do modified, it's going to send out invalidates to all of the other cores. So let's say CPU 0 goes ahead and, and sort of gets in. And then it's going to send invalidates to everyone else. And then CPU uh, 18 comes in, and it's going to send an invalid to everyone else. So all of these are waiting, trying to get modified. Now, there's not a, as far as I know, not a, uh, a strict queue for this. Instead, it's kind of just luck of the draw. Whoever happens to come in gets it. Okay. So on average, we would expect that the lock holder is going to have to wait in over two time. Right? There's going to be in over two invalidate messages that happen before the lock holder can actually get in and write its zero. So that means we've got order n time to release the lock. And then order one time for the next acquire. Why order one time for the next acquire? Well, because whichever one comes in next and does the exchange is going to find that they got the lock. Okay. So, but that means the handoff is the sum of these two. And the handoff is order n time. So what that means is actually if we look at all n cores going through and each getting the lock in turn, that's going to mean where our sum is going to be order n squared. Again, the holder of the lock is having to wait conceptually in line, let's say randomly in line. So this isn't a nice uh, orderly queue. Instead, it's a mob of CPUs all trying to get to the front of the line, and it's random which one is going to make it. So on average, uh, in over two times order n. So the summation is going to be n squared which is, of course, expensive. And this is where our time comes from.
So what can we do? Well, we can create a new kind of a lock. So the new kind of lock, we're going to go ahead and actually add some better behavior. So in the acquire case, we don't have any priority as to which lock gets it. So if, if we had a CPU that's been waiting to get a lock for a while, it could be that a, a newcomer CPU comes in and it happens to get the lock next. So we want to maybe add some semantics for acquire such that they're going to be assigned in order. 